guys and welcome back to another video. So Mad has decided to just plop down on my friend here and she does not want to move whatsoever. So this is her position for the intro. <laughs> so whatever, but basically today I'm just going to be doing the, well, setting up the reptiles enclosures. I was cleaning them and I figured why not just set them up and make a video out of it. So this is gonna be how to set up a gecko enclosure. I have wanted to do more reptile related videos on my channel lately and yeah um <laughs> a lot of people think reptiles are gross or weird or if you like reptiles you're gross or weird i kind of agree with the if you like reptiles you're weird part but i mean not everybody that likes reptiles is weird it might just be me <laughs> but i mean look at this lizard face and tell me that's not cute that's right you can't because it's adorable anyway i'm rambling let's just get into the video so we're going to start off with yoshi's enclosure this is just a 10 gallon enclosure this is only suitable for a smaller baby or juvenile leopard gecko adults absolutely cannot live in this they need 20 gallons 40 gallons but yeah first we're going to start off with putting some substrating obviously so we've chosen to use paper towel because it is a solid substrate which means there is no risk of impaction as well as it is a very sanitary option let's talk a little bit about that thing in the background there that is a thermostat which means it controls all of yoshi's heating elements he does have two heating elements a heat pad for nighttime and a basking bowl for the daytime so it's very very important that you have your heating elements regulated by a thermostat just wanted to mention that real quick now that the substrate's all in we're going to want to start adding some hides and decor so for leopard geckos you're going to want to have something they can hide in as well as something they can bask on on their warm side so this is a warm hide that also serves as a basking platform that yoshi loves to go on top of and bask as well as go inside of and hide so it works perfect we're going to need to put a cool hide on the cool end of their tank so this is just a little tree stump hide from petco or something and he likes it and he goes inside of it so it works really well so yeah and then i just added this little plastic cactus plant because why not he also did climb on it one time and it was super funny so this next step is optional but we just do it for yoshi it is adding in a calcium dish this can be a bottle cap or a very small dish just calcium without d3 because they can regulate their calcium levels but not their d3 levels so please do calcium without d3 but you can just put it into a little bottle cap and then place it in their cake and as you can see i spilled the calcium dish <laughs> oops after i cleaned up my mess i put the calcium dish in and it's all fixed now and one of the last things you're going to want to do is just adding some enrichment i had this little hanging plastic plant on hand so i just decided to put that in there even though he's probably not really going to use it it's just more for decoration and also just this little tunnel thingy that he likes to climb on and go through and now you're going to need some kind of water dish obviously so that they can stay hydrated you're going to want to change this about every day or so just making sure there's constantly fresh water in their cage and finally you're going to need a humid hide so that when they're shedding they can get all of their shit off nicely yoshi actually refused to come out of his humid hide for this cage cleaning slash setup so i just left him in his humid hide and there he is just chilling in there and I almost forgot to mention, you're going to want some kind of thermometer humidity gauge for the cool and warm side. We just use the Zoomed digital combo ones. There's one on the cool side and one on the warm side to measure the humidity and temperatures. And that's the setup. As I mentioned before, this would not be suitable for an adult leopard gecko at all. You'd basically do this, but in a larger cage with some more enrichment. And you do want to make sure there is a lid on the cage, obviously, because leopard geckos are kind of known to escape, surprisingly. So yeah, we have this screen lid and some clips. And I guess that's it. And 
so now it is time to do Sirius, my girl girl gecko's enclosure. He lives in this 18 by 18 by 24 inch front opening exoterra tank. It also has this LED light and this cork background, but once again, we use paper towels for the substrate, but he is going to be upgraded to a bioactive tank pretty soon. So the first thing I put into his enclosure was just this cork round. He absolutely loves it. He climbs all over it and it's probably one of his favorite things in his cage. Arboreal geckos like gargoyle geckos do need things to climb on. So cork bark, vines, hanging plants are a really good option. So he also has this rock. This is just a hide that goes on the ground. You do not need these. They probably won't use them, but Sirius kind of climbs on top of it. So I just have it in there for him. Sirius also has these two food ledges. I just put two food ledges in there just to make sure he's eating since he is still technically a juvenile. And they are just suction cup food ledges. One thing you're going to want to absolutely have in there is some vines and things for them to climb on. I just have this huge vine for Sirius. You can just suction cup it to the enclosure however it works. So be prepared to buy a lot of fake plants, and I mean a lot. <laughs> there is also this piece of driftwood in there. I love driftwood for reptiles, especially geckos. It gives them a lot of enrichment. And then I just added in this really big plastic plant. Another great thing for them to climb on. I just got this from Petco. And this is basically how the setup is looking so far with everything in. This is just another plastic plant that I believe we got from a local reptile store. And this plant is just another hanging plastic plant from Petco. The last piece of foliage I'm going to add in there is just this fern leaf vine that I do believe we got from PetSmart, although there is constantly things falling off of it. It's not a very good quality vine, but Sirius does like climbing on it, so it's okay. And now you can start adding your water dishes in. It is debated whether crested slash gargoyle geckos need to have water dishes. I personally like to provide some for Sirius, just so I know that in between mistings, he is getting water. And I also have pre-1982 pennies in there. I actually learned this trick from the channel called Snake Discovery here on YouTube. You basically put them in and they are supposed to kill bacteria and stuff. Yeah, Snake Discovery, definitely go check them out. They're a really cool channel. And then you're going to want to add their food into their enclosure. This is just Sirius's food from the previous night because he does get fed every single day. So this gets refreshed later tonight. And basically you can just get this powder for crusted and gargoyle geckos, mix it with some water. And it makes this little pasty kind of thing. And my favorite brands are Pangea and or Pashi, and that's what Sirius eats. And since Kristen and Gargoyle Geckos do need very high humidity, I just gave this a quick spray down to make sure that he has enough moisture in his cage. And here is Sirius just chilling in his travel carrier. So here is Sirius just chilling on this plant. As I mentioned earlier, he will be getting a bioactive setup, a fully bioactive setup with live plants and isopods and springtails and everything. 
But yeah, if you would like to get a crested or gargoyle gecko or any animal in general, please do your own research. This is not a care guide. This is kind of me showing how my lizard's enclosures are set up to hopefully help some people. But yeah, plants are the number one thing for them. This is just another plastic plant from Petco. And since Ceres is in a front opening exoterra enclosure, it closes just like this and locks really nicely, which is the thing I love about exoterras. And again, he has this thermometer humidity gauge. Really important, you need to keep track of the humidity and the temperature since they are high humidity species. So yeah, that is how to set up a gecko enclosure. Again, this was for baby to juvenile leopard geckos and gargoyle slash crested geckos. But please, if you're looking into getting any of these animals, do your own research. That was not a care guide. That was just kind of showing how I currently have my enclosure set up just as kind of maybe to help some people. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm very sorry I was going to post this video yesterday, but it is a day late. I will still be posting Mondays and Fridays and some bonus videos. But my friend who lives halfway across the country came and surprised me for a surprise visit and yeah, she's gonna be here for about the entire month, so we were just kind of hanging out yesterday. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed, have a wonderful day, and stay safe. Bye! Oh my god, Maggie is being so insane right now! Can I please film an intro, Maggie? I can't even talk. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants lives in a pineapple under the sea. <laughs>